Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. The man convicted of burning down a Duluth synagogue is back in police custody tonight after violating probation orders for a second time. Police arrested Matthew Amion on a warrant Tuesday night around 7.30. Amion, who is homeless, first violated terms of his probation several days after admitting he started the September fire at Adas Israel Congregation. Then, he failed to show up at the Chum Shelter in Duluth, followed by a meeting with his probation officer. On Monday, as part of his probation, he reported to Bethel, an inpatient treatment facility in Duluth, but after doing so, walked away. He was found and arrested last night and remains behind bars tonight. But one of many questions remains. How is it a person who was sentenced to jail for burning down a synagogue is able to just disappear at will? CBS 3's Emma Quinn joins us now to explain what comes next for him. Emma. During his sentencing in October, Judge Sean Florkey ordered Amiot to serve 90 days in jail for starting the fire that burned down the 118-year-old synagogue. Judge Florkey said the jail time would be stayed should a treatment bed open up for Amiot, which it did on Monday. During the sentencing, J Judge Sean Florkey had these words for Amiot. Take a listen. So we'll hold you accountable and we'll give you resources and we'll watch you. If you do it, great. If not, we got a cage. St. Louis County court officials say what happened twice now with Amiot isn't a rare occurrence when it comes to people serving probation. The county says it's a making a con concerted effort to provide treatment as opposed to time behind bars. That's the reason Amiot was ordered to an inpatient facility once a bed opened up rather than finishing his 90-day sentence. Assistant County Attorney Vicki Wanta says the end goal of probation is rehabilitation. The courts are usually going to want to try to get a defendant into treatment to hopefully fix these long-term, deep-rooted issues, um, f hoping for more long-term effects. And what happens now is a conversation between Amiot's probation officer and the court to decide what comes next. And regarding the public concerns about um, Amiot's being, on the, being out on the street, Wanta says the court will always give a defendant the opportunity to address their problems, but didn't speak on why he's not being more closely supervised. To get more answers on how this could happen, we also reached out to the county attorney Mark Rubin and Bethel, the treatment center Amiot was supposed to be in now. We're waiting for a word, we're waiting for a word from them. It's also not immediately clear what happens next for Amia, but we'll keep you posted. All right, thanks, Emma. Meanwhile, the Adas Israel congregation released a short statement regarding Amiot's arrest. They said they feel Amiot needs help and should not be out on his own. A 